Hey, what's up garden friends? How's everybody doing? Oh, there's a lot of glare there. That's just the sun being reflective and annoying. It was nice and overcast when I first came out here. I have these two barrel planters here and uh, well, I don't know how I'm gonna explain this. A few weeks ago, I tossed together a planter with the Sunfinity Sunflower and the only ones I could find at the time looked really bad, really, really shabby. So in the video, I said, okay, I'm gonna give this a few weeks, let it bounce back and then we'll finish it off. Well, it's that time. So I'll go ahead and insert that video into here and then we'll come back, see how it has or has not improved and then finish that off and put together a nice trio of planters and hopefully fix this lighting. Okay, so here's that video right now. I finally managed to get my hands on one of these Sunfinity sunflowers. So, uh, it's not looking too good. Unfortunately, really, none of the ones I could find looked good. I went to several different places. They all looked kind of crummy. So I went ahead and I found some that were on clearance. And if you follow my vlogs, then you may remember that I did a little clearance video a while ago where I got a whole bunch of different perennials on clearance. They're looking pretty shabby, too. <laughs> But uh, that's to be expected, they, they were on clearance. So I think what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm gonna pot this up with a whole bunch of those clearance plants and then give this a few weeks and do the update or finish the video at that point. But I don't expect this to look very pretty when I'm done with it right now. So first off though, I wanna talk about this Sunfinity Sunflower. This is a Helianthus hybrid. They're supposed to get about two to three feet wide and three to four feet tall. The main appeal to the Sunfinity Sunflower is that they're supposed to be very vigorous, very floriferous, heavy, heavy bloomers. It's supposed to be able to keep flowering continuously for up to 12 weeks, which is pretty awesome. Most sunflowers, you know, they do their thing for a few weeks and then it's over. And what I've read also says that they make pretty decent cut flowers that last up to a week inside. That's kind of cool. Obviously, since this is a sunflower, it's going to be very appealing to the pollinators, the birds, the bees, and whatnot. The thing is, I need to get it potted up and get it into recovery mode. I want to get this looking nice and pretty. I'm going to plant this up with some fountain grass. I have some artemisia, some salvia, maybe some balloon flowers. I'm going to just kind of throw a hod podge of those clearance plants in there, give them some time to recover and see how they look. I know that this isn't looking too hot, but I'm going to give it a couple weeks and then we'll check back in, see how things are doing. It's really probably going to take more like a month for this to really start looking nice, but I don't want to have to wait that long to put the video out. So be right back and I guess just a second for you guys but it'll be a few weeks well so there it is it's been a few weeks I haven't really noticed any drastic changes what I can say though is that I did have this in part sun so it's getting about five hours a day that's kind of why this fountain grass is a little bit wilty or not wilty but it's leaning a little bit and it's not that deep deep reddish purple that it should be and that is obviously going to influence the growth on the Sunfinity Sunflower. I did use a Sunfinity and a, another planter that should have been out before this one. It was a pumpkin wagon and that one's doing wonderfully. So maybe it's just a bad bat. Truth be told, this was the third one I had tried. The first two died before I could even plant them. I only had them for a day. It was the heat of the summer. I had them in shade, but I think whatever the growers had them potted up in must just not have been something to their liking because if it was damp and hot, they just die. Sunflowers don't like hot and damp, so a lot of plants don't like hot and damp. But that could have had something to do with it, but it's in a different mix now and it's still, there's some growth that has been flowering, but honestly, I think it just looks kind of junky. So when this is all said and done, I am going to go ahead and prune that back. But something a little bit more exciting, I have two more of these barrels to plant up and I don't want these three to be like a matching set. Each one's going to be a little bit different with the exception being that I am going to go ahead and put a cabbage or kale in each one. That's going to be the only thing about these that really matches. I picked these little barrels up, which you can barely even really see them now, but they're there. I picked those up there on clearance for five bucks a pop at Walmart. They were normally $10 a piece. But really, when it comes to fall arrangements, anything dark, even something tin or metal looks really, really pretty. I like using the plastic whiskey barrels a lot just because the real wood ones are one, too heavy. They get waterlogged. I always have troubles with earwigs whenever I've used them, which is probably just some type of random coincidence, but it's still, that's enough for me to stay away from them. And they're just big, bulky, and heavy. These are lightweight. I can plant them up and then dump them out, clean them, and store them away for the rest of the year when I don't want to use them anymore. May not end up using everything on the table. I'm just going to kind of dive in, start playing around with them, and seeing what I like. Okay, and there we go, all done. A pretty hefty variety of plants going on in these guys. 
which is perfect. Like I said, I wasn't actually trying to make this like a perfect matching set. I'll go ahead and I'll start from the left and work my way to the right and go over what plants are in here. So in the back of this planter, this is an ornamental corn, it has really pretty pink variegated foliage and the variety is called pink zebra. I think this looks really cool. Something a little bit different from just having like a purple fountain grass or something tall to have in the center of your planters. Not only does it have really cool looking foliage, but it has corn in it. That's pretty neat. What that looks like when it comes off the plant, I do not know. I even really like just these fun seed heads that it has on it too. Those look very fallish. Something tells me that the birds will probably enjoy snacking on that as well. And right next to the corn is a zinnia. A zinnia that could use some cleaning up and some tidying. This variety is from the Magellan mix, I believe. Nice whites and oranges. I like having some whites in some of my planters because it draws things out at nighttime, kind of highlights them a little bit. There's also a really nice ornamental kale here in the front. All of the kales and cabbages that I picked up, none of them actually had a variety name on them, so they were just assorted. Oh, I, I don't know, I'm so sorry. It's pretty, I like the color. It's got nice veining in it, adds a lot of texture very fall and spilling over the front this is a creeping thyme just an herb i grabbed from the herb section i like the texture of thyme it, there's something about it it's a little bit wild and free and it smells nice you, and you can actually like use it which is nice always fun having pots that are multi-purpose with more sunlight this time should actually kind of shorten up a little bit get a little bit more tidy and cling a little bit closer as it trails down the front. And then here in the center, this is the planter that started it all. And full disclosure here, it has actually been a couple days since I started this video. Weather and lighting just wasn't behaving and it was Labor Day weekend, I was out doing fun social things. So. And from just a couple days, you can already see that the foliage on this purple fountain grass is starting to, well, purple back up. I pulled the Sunfinity Sunflower out of the planter because it, I mean, it's had its chance. It's been like three and a half weeks, four weeks, something. I don't know. It's had its chance. It's still looking pretty junky. So I was like, you gotta go. So to toss in another sunflower, it's just an assorted sunflower. It's a little bit short for this, unfortunately. I would have very much preferred that it would stand up above this hookara here, but you know what? It's all right. And it will probably put on a little bit more height, but probably not much. Once they're flowering, they're pretty much done unless it's the Sunfinity, which I'd I don't know about him. I do have a quick update about the sunflowers. I've been thinking that the Sunfinny sunflowers weren't really working well for me. And I did actually just notice a goldfinch, a female goldfinch sitting right on top of the flowers, pulling all the seeds out. So that would probably explain why they haven't been looking too great for me, because they're getting torn to pieces. You know, I'm actually totally fine with that. Thistle is so expensive. If the sunflowers are going to attract the mint, that's way cheaper. Have at it, enjoy. I love goldfinches. I did have to kind of pull up this guy's roots a little bit, so it's looking a little bit shabby, but it should perk back up really in no time. I'll probably have this in part sun. I'll have all these in part sun for, I don't know, several days and move them into the full sun just to kind of give their roots a chance to recover from being pulled apart a little bit. And with frequent watering, of course, it should be just fine. But this is Hookara Foamy Bells Golden Zebra. Really pretty fall foliage. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that just perfect for fall? I think that that is very fitting. I love that. And right next to the Hookara and in front of that fountain grass is another kale variety. I do not know, but it's pretty. It will, these will like spread out. Things are gonna get a little bit smashed in here, but they're not gonna be growing for more than several weeks at the most. So I'm not too concerned about that. And trailing over the front, one of my favorite trailers, Creeping Jenny. Goes well against the brown, brings things out a little bit, and it stays tidy and tight. That's one of the things I really like about Creeping Jenny. The darker, or the, this is, I think this variety is the Golden Jenny. I'm not positive, but I think it plays well with the other colors. Very last planter here, up here in the top, this flower, this is a cone flower. The variety is called tomato soup. Okay. On camera, the flowers look a little bit more pinky than they actually are. They're pretty reddish orange. Let me see if I can't adjust so you can see that a little bit better. There we go. That's much more true to form. And even still, they're much more reddish orange in person. I like using cone flowers a lot. One, just because the pollinators love them. The birds, bees, butterflies, and everything, they're all over them. And that's fantastic. I really enjoy that. This particular variety has just been blooming like a champ for me. The things I really like about this variety is it has been extremely vigorous. It has just been putting up new flower buds like absolute insanity. And what's not to love about that? And down in the front to the right of the coneflower, this is another kale. Don't know the variety, just was an assorted kale. I like the purples and the greens. I think it goes well with the plant next to it and on the other side of it, which is the Pure Joy Sedum from Proven Winners. This is going to look really cool as these flowers start to open up. They're kind of white with the light pink in the center. 
really pretty and they only get about 8 to 12 inches tall. And to the left of this item, I put in here a coleus. This is the flamethrower chipotle. That's the variety of that one. The foliage kind of similar to the hookara, just good fall colors. I like it a lot. That's going to fill out and probably get a little bit bigger. And then spilling over the front is dichondra silver falls. The dichondra looks pretty junky. I have not been able to buy dichondra that's in really good shape at all this year. Every time I go to a nursery or to a grower anywhere, they're in their flats and they're all grown together in one giant mat and I don't normally need to buy an entire flat of them especially with how much they cost so you end up having to kind of tear them apart to get them out and then wait for them to recover which is pretty annoying not a huge fan of that but that's been a trend I've noticed at pretty much all the nurseries this year I mean I don't blame them they don't have time to at the nurseries to go through and untangle them and keep them from growing together every day but it would just be nice to not have to shred your plants to buy them and that's the end of that rant overall I really like how these came out I do wish there was more height in that sunflower there but that's all right you have to stand back a little bit so you can see these see them in their planters these barrels I don't remember it's been a few days, so I don't remember what I said in the beginning of the video, but the barrels were on clearance for five bucks a piece at Walmart. That barrel I already had. That's why they don't really match, which is kind of nice. It's one of the reasons why I was like, I don't really need to match these. It doesn't really matter. And I may not actually probably even have these together when I set these out. They're going to kind of, like I said, go away into part sun for about a week or so. I'll keep them moist and watered very well, and then I will move them up to sun. It's also quite warm here right now. I wanted to get a jump start on the fall planters, but it's September 1st and it's still pretty toasty where I live in September. These different kales I have planted in here, they're probably gonna bolt. I went ahead and I put them in here for the sake of the video. Uh, that's another reason actually that I'm going to have these in part sun for a week, maybe even more than that, just because it's hot. It's still in the 90s here and I'm not entirely confident that they aren't gonna take off and bolt. I don't want that to happen. So. Come late September, they will have been moved into the sun when we were having cooler evenings and whatnot, and they should be okay. Going out of absolutely everything I have planted in here, I think this pink zebra ornamental corn is probably my favorite. I need to clean its leaves up a little bit, but it's just so neat, and I love the little wispies, the seed heads on top. It's so pretty. I, of course, love the seed heads that there's no way those are going to focus. And I, of course, love the seed heads on any fountain grass, even, I mean, they're out of focus, but just trust me, they're pretty. Purple fountain grass is an excellent thing to have in your planters. It adds a lot of texture. With more sun, you're going to have more upright, full growth, and it will stand up more straight and tidy as well. But uh, it's just going to have to hold on a little bit because, like I said, these guys need about a week to recover in part sun. And guys, I have been seeing the butterflies and bees on this cone flower just almost nonstop. I mean, now that I'm over here and filming, of course they're not here, but the monarchs, they have actually been spending a lot of time on here in the morning. That's a lot of fun. And it's a tall variety too. Let me look at its tag. I know I should have done this when I was talking about the cone flower, but I just kind of wanted to circle back to that real quick. Its requirements are full sun to part shade. This is a low water plant. Cone flowers do not need to be wet very often. They're very, very, very drought tolerant. This variety gets 27 to 30 inches tall, hardy zones three through nine. So this will potentially be perennial in this planter, just like this auto or the Pure Joy Sedum, which is also perennial zones three and up. I'm in zone six, so they should be able to take the winter in this container just fine as long as it gets watered occasionally. And I'm still gonna move them to a sheltered place to be safe, but those will come back. I can move them into the gardens. The same thing with the hookra, which is hardy uh, minus 30 to minus 20 Fahrenheit. So what is that? That's zone four, right? So I'm really liking that some of the plants that are in these are going to be perennial. Like I said, they may not survive in these containers, but I'll keep an eye on them and then I can plant them out into the garden next year. Particularly this coneflower at 27 to 30 inches tall. That's a pretty tall coneflower and it's probably 18 inches tall right now. So it's just going to keep on getting bigger which I think is awesome. Don't always see coneflowers where I live that get super, super tall. I love a nice tall coneflower, especially one that just blooms so incredibly prolifically. All right, that's gonna do it. Just toss these together. Like I said, no exact pattern or matchiness I was trying to go for, just wanted fall colors and textures and they're gonna be in, put in different places. I like them a lot. Also, I apologize if sound of the fountain is, is coming through the mic really loud. I had to switch my filming position because the sun just it was not cooperating also guys it looks so much prettier in person than they do through my viewfinder i'm still learning i have a fancy camera with a lot of different settings and i'm messing with it but it's just it's not coming through quite right but as always i'll have pictures posted on instagram speaking of which all my social medias linked down below go ahead and follow me and i follow you back it's a lot of fun looking at those plant pictures and seeing what everybody has going on in their gardens and comment down below i just love hearing from everybody hope y'all are doing well don't forget to like the video it helps a ton i really appreciate it thank you so 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 much and subscribe as well i upload multiple times a week 
I will have updates on these guys in the monthly garden tour, which actually probably won't be out until mid-September, which is going to be pretty close to when this video comes out. So they should look fairly different when they're close together. But I mean, who really knows? The weather has been really wonky here. All right, everybody. As always, and most importantly, keep on growing. Bye-bye.